my brother. Shake my hand the right thing. There we go, man. Uh, What's up? The, the amount of people that shake my hand now like this, shout out to them. They obviously watch the videos. Do they actually? Yeah. Who? Just all the fans. Oh, really? The green wall. Yeah. Usually, usually I, I make it a point to go out there because I know that you can't. I know that the players can't, you know, obviously back in the day we used to have the the ability to have the meetups and the scuff booth signings. And yeah, all that events stuff. are so weird now and I feel I feel kind of personally bad because I mean fans probably think we're avoiding them and I just want to say we're not. I mean, we're just not supposed to like interact. That's right. Because the amount of people that get COVID after every event is insane. And especially after this last event, we have a two week window till champs. If you get COVID, you're like borderline and we went through that last year. Yeah. I'm not doing that shit again. Um, obviously, I've known you since you were 17 years old, fresh out of high school. You uh, you, you started competing. Everybody knows your story. Uh, one of the first times that I that I met you, and I and I have a question for you: Have you noticed your hair becoming less red as you get older? Because I remember yours being like bright, bright red in, nah, in your it's, Quantic jersey. It's it's uh, the sun. If I'm in the sun a lot, my hair gets lighter. If I'm not in the sun at all, it's dark. So you can tell when I'm really grinding. You can tell you're grinding right now. Yeah, you can tell. I haven't seen the sun in weeks. Uh, the, obviously, the amount of pressure that is on you specifically, uh, one, for being the face of the league, being the face of Optic, uh, being the veteran that you are, having competed for the last decade almost, more than a decade? When did yeah. you start competing? Well, my first tournament win was in 2011. and that But that was like my first official MLG tournament win. So I was playing before that. So that's what people don't really take into account. Is that, I mean, this is probably, I think this is my 13th season. Yeah. Or is it 13 Call of Duties? That kind of seems like a crazy number. It is a crazy number. I, I mean, it is it, it, I mean, we know it's crazy, but how does it feel for you? Is it like a day-to-day -day thing? Um, obviously, you know, the, the older you get, the the closer you get to retirement. The, hard, the older I've got, the harder it's gotten, obviously. The game itself? The games that they're putting out nowadays don't help with the amount of, like, interactions and, you know, actions per minute you have to do on the controller. Like, if they were making normal CODs, I'd be, like, good. But, like, they're making, like, vanguards where I have to slide cancel 6,000 times a map. All right. Now, uh, a little bit of more of a fun question. Uh, I personally believe that your Modern Warfare 3 year was, like, your most dominant year, in my opinion. Oh, that's the most dominant year that y I think we'll ever see from anyone ever. But it well, no, wasn't— Well, for you specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me and the team, me, Ray— Will and Joe, like, we were literally, like, we only lost one tournament. And it was because it was cold. Yes, I have an excuse for that. Yeah. Because I have an excuse for everything, apparently. Yeah. But that there's, one was a legit excuse. Yeah, there's there's a difference between excuses and reasons. And I think that the reasons are the ones that are sort of taken as excuses, which is unfair to you. Uh, no, which, that's one of the annoying which, things. Well, which one do you believe you're the most dominant uh, Call of Duty that you've uh, ever played? MW3. Well, we we didn't lose until the very You last. personally as a player, which one do you oh. have the most confidence in? Like my best game ever? Probably MW3. MW3 seconded by Black Ops 2? Oh. AW, I was Black Ops 3, Black Ops 1. Those were all better. Which one? Which was the second best? Scump. And I'm I'm getting to the question. When 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 my we second there. best game? Yeah. MW three, and then I'd probably say like either A W, probably A W. And then probably like Black Ops three, and then Black Ops one. Like I I don't know. Probably something. Like if that. there was to be, well, let me put it like this. So here's the, here's the question that I want to ask. If there was a free for all in which every year the Scumpy played in the league joined as that age of scump. So you have 17-year-old scump versus 18-year-old scump versus 20-year-old scump versus 27-year-old scump, and all of them in between, who wins? I don't know, dude. Like, <laughs> that's such a hard question. Like, maybe 21, 20, 20-year-old, 20 21-year-old. I don't know, dude. Somewhere, somewhere from, like, 17 to 22 was, like, my best years, probably. But that's not even true, because MW3, I was 15. 15 to 22 are my best years. One of the things that people don't take into account is the fact that you haven't truly just been a professional Call of Duty player. When you get compared to the likes of Crim6, uh, Clasters, like everybody that's in the top five greatest of all time, none of them were creating as much content as you were. So you were arguably not focusing all of your skills and efforts into perfecting your craft as a pro Call of Duty player. Do you think and how much better do you think you would have been if your sole focus from the beginning, money's not an option, money's not a concept, 
how much better do you think you would be as a Call of Duty player? I don't know. I don't know that it would have changed my personal skills so much. I probably could have been a better teammate at times. Because, like, I don't know. I mean, I was still, like, a good teammate. There were a couple years where I was a shitty teammate. I mean, everyone has those years. Like, when you're young, you're dumb, you think you're the shit. Everyone has those years. But I don't know. I don't think that it really affected me that much. I mean, I was playing a lot, so maybe it maybe it like kind of helped me. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's it's hard to say because like I was playing so much Call of Duty, mm-hmm. and I don't think people understand that. Like I was playing COD. Like when I say like ten to twelve hours a day, I literally mean ten to twelve hours a day. Like it was like nonstop. Yeah. And that's why I think like now it's like I can't do that anymore. I just can't. You know, it's not it's not possible. I mean, my hands like. I'm after scrims, my hands are just chalked. They hurt. Yeah. And Either they get swollen. They're just like they just get like tight. My you can just feel like it just gets tight. Like everything gets tight. I mean, everyone, even like the younger players say they have that. Mm-hmm. Which is like what I'm saying, the games they're making right now are not helping my case. Cause like after six hours of playing straight, like we played three sets yesterday, and oh my god, at the end of it, I was like, Darren, I'm not. Yeah. It was like so, it's just so intense. It's just, it's hard. Um, you mentioned if you were to take content out, maybe you would have been a better teammate. When you were teaming with Nate Chat back in those days, and obviously you guys were both on the grind, obviously, you know, him being the first, almost the first of his kind professional Call of Duty player that sort of transcended Call of Duty and became more of a streamer or an equal amount of, of focus was being put on both. Uh, do you think that the content of the competition that you had between you two uh, had to do with your with your ability to be a better teammate, or do you think it was just you growing up? We had competition, but like, I mean, there was a point where it was an unhealthy competition, but for the most part, it was like healthy. For the most part, there was like a few moments, there were a few blowouts, obviously, um, but that's just that's just gonna happen. I mean, we we were competing against each other, which I wish we wouldn't have done that, but in the position we were in. Like, we weren't making that much money. Like, at that time, I was fresh out of high school, had, like, basically no money to my name. I mean, I had a couple tournament wins, but we were winning, like, $2,500 a tournament win. So, like, basically had no money. Um, So, like, yeah, we were competing against each other. Like, we wanted to make money. We had no fucking money. Like, I didn't go to college. You know, back then, it was really scary for me because... You know, I I took the risk and I took the leap of faith to move to Chicago and do the team house thing and all that. When I I could have went to college and got a degree, but like I said, at that point, we had we had nothing. So I think I think we definitely butted heads a lot more because of the the content. But I also feel like it made us like kind of closer in the end of things because now like we both grew up and realized like what we were doing. It wasn't like we were against each other it was more like we were just out for ourselves at that time Mm -hmm. and it just kind of like muddied the relationship a little bit then but now like we both realized that you know we were dumb it's just a part of growing up and we didn't understand we didn't understand you know we didn't know how far this thing was going to go we didn't know you know 10 years down the line am I going to be good financially am I going to be safe you know secure am I going to have to go back to school like we didn't know we had all these questions that we didn't know so I think that like just kind of made it a little tense at times between us, um, but I I don't think I don't think I was really a bad teammate for the most part because mm. of that. I think I was still a pretty good. I was a horrible teammate overall, but because of that, I wasn't a bad teammate. And right. like Black Ops Two, I was a bad teammate. Black Ops Two. Yeah, like I had an ego. Like I was just a bad teammate. You were asking people to buy you steak dinners after winning championships. I still do that. You still do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get a, if we win a chip, I'm getting a dinner after. Like, it's the least you could do. You could buy me dinner. Yeah. Take me dinner. Yeah, well, look, I, I think uh, I think we do. I do a pretty good job at giving you guys dinner before the championship, which I think. Oh, yeah. Is, no, we get we get treated well. Yeah, I think I think that's the problem. You know, I think that all of that needs to stop in order for you guys to want that dinner at the end of, nah, of that. Nah, bro. How would you feel? If I told everybody, every single one of your teammates, coaches included, that uh, that I said, all right, look, if you guys win champs, I'm going to give you an additional $25,000 bonus if you guys win. You guys end up winning, 
And then I'm like, I was just trying to motivate you guys to achieve the impossible. I'm not paying you motherfuckers shit. How would you feel if I did that? I mean, that would be kind of messed up. But at the end of the day, like, we won champs. I don't think we would care well, that much. Listen, I'm going to give you guys $50,000 bonus if you guys win champs this time. Lock it in. Um, That's cap. <laughs> when Nature retired in 2016, um, do you remember how it happened? Do you remember me telling you this guy? Like, did, what, was, what was that conversation with, with uh, him like? That was a weird dude because so it was me, Matt, and Krim and Nate. So Nate like was kind of throwing up the bullshit for a little bit. What's that mean? He was just throwing up the bullshit. Like you could tell, like you could tell that he wasn't like fully invested into it, you know? And like for us, we were we were just way, way we were like super, super competitive, like wanted to win everything. And Nade, like, you can just tell when someone's, like, kind of becoming done with it. And that's, like, how Matt was, I feel like, towards the end. So, at the end of it, I don't really exactly remember uh, how it happened. But I'm pretty sure... How did it happen, Matt? How did he tell you guys? I'm pretty sure he just told us, like, he's retiring. He's cut the Huh? <laughs> okay, so so I asked Matt for a little bit of a so like yeah formal yeah formal. So after we lost champs, I mean me, Krim, and Matt were fucking devastated because like I mean that was our tournament to lose, and we lost it. And Matt formal just said that he caught the vibe like we were not happy, like we were pissed. So Nate sort of got the vibe he that you guys vibe. that yeah. you guys were done. He pulled out a fucking HBR like. Yeah, I mean, in, in his, in, <laughs> like, he was checked. In his defense, he's still he's still defending it. You know what I mean? No, so. I think I mean looking back at it, it's funny. I mean, it's not really funny because like obviously I would have loved to have a ring, but the formal like, is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny. All right, what about when he said when he announced that he was leaving Optic? How did you personally feel about that? That one was weird. Um, I mean, I couldn't really knock it because, like, he was trying to start his own thing and he had a vision and whatever. And, I mean, now look well, at Well, he it. didn't, though, right? He he wanted to just – he pursued love in, in L.A. It's arguably – not arguably. It's definitely why he left. He wanted to leave and he wanted to start his own thing. Um, and, you know, ultimately his clothing brand, 100 Thieves, you know, he couldn't he couldn't stay away from Call of Duty. So he jumped back into it, sponsored uh, Aches and, and the team. Um, but but that aside, like, how, how did you personally feel as, you know, having somebody that important to Optic, someone that important to your life, to my life, to, to, to us, just saying, you know, we're no longer part of the gang? I mean, I don't think that I really felt like too crazy about it. I mean, it's, you understood it. It's his decision. Yeah. It's not like. It's not like he's gone forever and he's like, it's not like he left and didn't fuck with us. It's like, yeah. you know, it's not like he left and. Well, he left and didn't fuck with me for like a year. So, yeah. Yeah, was, that's different. He still <laughs> fucked with me. Yeah. But like, I understand that. But it wasn't like, yeah, I mean, leaving Optic, I mean, yeah, it's, it was weird, I guess. But at the same time, like I said, it wasn't like I knew that he like disliked me or something. It was like, he's yeah. just doing his own thing. Got it. I had a personal question that I never asked you and I haven't asked you. How did how did the conversation between you, Stro, or whoever it was to leave Optic for those two weeks? How did that like where did it happen? Where did it happen and how did it happen? UMG Philly. Uh I'm pretty sure I was just so fed up. Like we placed like top sixteen. Obviously, like I still say this now, I'm a competitor first, and you know, content will always come second as long as I'm competing. Uh it's just how it is, that's how it has to be. Um, if I prioritize content and like, what the fuck am I doing competing? Mm -hmm. Um, but so I was really, really mad. We weren't placing well, we weren't playing well. And I just thought the team, like, honestly, I was like, I think that I could be on a better team and I want to win and I'm going to try to win. So I talked to Stro. I think I, I'm pretty sure we were outside or something in, in Philly and it was so cold. And I was like, I, I'm leaving. I, I want to leave. He was like, all right, come on over, come on over to us. And he gave me the whole pitch. And yeah, he sold me. I mean, obviously he sold me. That won't hurt you? Yeah, it fucking hurt me. It hurt no. me. It, 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 it hurt me because I was like, I'm like, no, we're not done. Like what what 
where you were going in my in my mind, your trajectory of where you were obviously fucking going. Like we're sitting here. Like that was my vision for what you were. And I'm like, that is not the place for you to be. So uh, yeah, I was upset. I was I was more upset when you but made But now me. that's the place that I am. What what uh what the yeah. what what upset me the most was like uh when you made me choose between you and you and Nate. And I was like, well, one of them is threatening to leave and the other one is not. You know, I wasn't choosing you over him. I was choosing you know what would optic what would optic look like if we both left um i don't know i i, I don't think that i would have pursued i don't know i think that I, that 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 optic could have gotten to imagine that imagine a different timeline where i stayed on envy and nade shot left no, i don't think he would have left if you left really no. so he left because of me no <laughs> uh, this, but I, so, he, so you're telling me he left because solely because of me? No, he didn't. No, he le he left because of me. He left because of the situation. He um, he he wanted ownership at the time. There was like no real way to to do that. But at the end of the day, when when Optic sold, I took care of everybody. No paper needed, right? You got taken care of. Embo's got taken care of. Uh, he would have obviously gotten taken care of, but you know he he needed a piece of paper. Uh, and at the time, I I just I, I don't know why I didn't even you know pursue that or wanted to do that. Um, but yeah, I, th I think there's a different time now. Yeah, it's, different. Today's a lot different. Yeah, way different. Um, I, I don't think that Optic would be where it's at today uh, if if early on you guys left. I think that it would still be an organization. It wouldn't have been a successful. Um, I don't think, but I still would have obviously cared about everybody that was, that was in it. I, oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't have been able to turn my back on uh, on them. I, th I think that we could have still made it work. I mean, my you know the, the model that we created uh, obviously works. Um, but it wouldn't have been as successful, that's for sure. I, I wouldn't have had uh, as good a time as as I did. I think um, when 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 you when you and Nate came into my life, I mean, I was 29 years old. I had no business being friends with fucking Damn, 17 year olds. That's crazy. I'm almost as old as you were when. Yeah. That. That's yeah. Cr that's crazy. Yeah. By now, but by, by your age, I was already on my second year in Optic, uh, already uploading videos to YouTube. You started at 25. Yep, 2005. Yeah. 2005 is when I when I when I joined. 2006 is when I took over. Uh, that's why it was established in 2006. I, I think, um, but but I think I think that I, I still would have been able to maybe pursue. I think I would have focused a little bit more on my own personal stuff. Uh, but I, I'm glad that that didn't happen. Obviously, uh, not because of the money, but I think that I, I think what Optic is 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 way bigger. Uh, if I pass away today, maybe Hex as a brand dies, but Optic will continue to live, and that's way stronger in my opinion than that because I can my name will always be attached to optic and that will live forever so I'm, I'm glad that it didn't though you know what I mean I, I, you're 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 one of my greatest friends in this it in would this have world. been a, it would have been an interesting timeline just think about that think about that it's crazy to think about think about my split second decision when I was like I gotta go back mm -hmm. imagine if I don't have that imagine if Nasha says fuck that he betrayed us he can't come yeah back. imagine if they say no yeah, but I think I'm pretty sure Bose was like, Bose was the yeah. one that was like, "Nah, we gotta pick it back up." I, I told I told Nate, I'm like, I'm Mark like, knew. I told Nate, I'm like, "Yo, I mean, it's, it's it's your choice." And then I look at Bose, and I'm like, "Please, <laughs> please say yes." Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm glad that that uh that that obviously everything turned out the way they did. So uh, let's let's uh, move forward to to the dynasty era, right? Two and a half years of of dominance. Uh, you guys finally achieve the what seemed to be the unachievable, the elusive world champs. We were dominant in every single facet of of, of, uh, of our business, competitive-wise and viewership-wise, uh, but we just were never able to capture it. Now, you guys getting to the pinnacle, winning champs, immediately after that, Matt leaves, and then you have your worst competitive Call of Duty year ever, not winning a single championship that entire year. Where was your mind at then? Well, we didn't really give ourselves much of a chance. That year was just really weird. I mean, I don't know how many events we had until, like, the breakup started. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it was, like, three events or two or three events. That's, like, when we were pretty much, like, butting heads and it was just, like, done. That's, like, the part of my career that I wish I could go back and, like, change it because I lived in Cali and, like, I was being really selfish and I had red bar internet. Like I, we literally couldn't practice, but it's not like I wasn't doing anything. I literally had the the tech out like 20 different times and they just couldn't fix it. So I looking back, I wish I would have just moved to Texas, but that wasn't even an option like at that time. Like in going into Black Ops 4 after the World War II season, 
Damon was literally like, I'll play with Seth again if he moves to Texas. And it was like a no brainer. But like at the time where I was in life, I couldn't just get up and fucking move. And like that, it was just a really bad situation. Well, that's not true though, because you could have. I mean, I could have, but like, who wants to do that? Like I was doing everything I could to fix it. I mean, and I just couldn't. And Mm -hmm. it, it, I didn't want to just get up and move. Like, but looking back on it, I wish that I would have done that. I mean, that's like the one thing in my career that I do regret is like not handling that situation better. Because mm-hmm. I, I mean, I love that team. Obviously, that team was hilarious. I mean, we were really good. It was a fun team. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything comes to an end at some point. Um, obviously, twenty twenty two. As we sit here today, uh, champs is one week away. Um, this is your. 13th season playing Call of Duty. I don't know. Endless, endless accomplishments. Obviously, notably, you know, uh, one of the most popular esports personality in the space. Um, going into champs, how do you feel that this year has gone so far? I think this has probably been the hardest year I've ever had. Like, personally, and then the whole Ender situation with his thumb, this year has been, like, the hardest that I've ever had. Because I've never had to deal with, like substitutes and you know it's just so annoying because we win major one second event ender's thumb his thumb problems start happening and then like we were like on this trajectory just going up 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 and then that happened and it was just like it was it was so hard like even i was watching a a stream last night of a player and he was like i wonder how good optic would have been this year if ender's thumb didn't happen and it's like, and 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 people still criticize us. Like we haven't dealt with this thing yep. all fucking year. Yep. And it's like they expect the world out of us when it's like we haven't really had the tools capable. I mean, our fourth got injured. We played with Jordan for an event. We played with Byron for like almost all all of stage three. Like, and then w- there were there were moments there were there were weeks and weeks of like. We wouldn't practice because we're like, we're going to get Ender back. Like he, The doctor said he's going to be healed in two weeks. And then two weeks down the line, the doctor gave him a wrong diagnosis and he wasn't healed in two weeks. And now it's like we just wasted two weeks of not practicing when we could have because we were just waiting for Ender to come back. But the doctor gave him the wrong fucking information. So now we're sitting here with our fucking cocks in our hands, not doing anything. And yeah, this year's been fucking, uh, this year's been uh, all over the place. And it's even more annoying because people still judge us like we've had our tools capable the whole year. It's so annoying. It's so fucking annoying. How how difficult is it for you to shut out the the annoying the annoying people that don't take common sense into account? Obviously, you and I have had endless conversations about this. And I'm like, Seth, hang up the phone. Don't look at Twitter. Get in your pool. Look at where you're sitting in your pool, looking at your house. How do you how do you not how, how do you block them out with everything that you've accomplished every I mean it's it, nothing that you have has been given to you everything that you've been working on so to allow you know some random twitter warrior to to get under your nerves I think it just gets on my nerves because like I I think that people know that like but it's that people don't know like that's the that's that's the thing like people like, dude, they 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 sit there and they're like, dude, you guys should have done this. It's like, motherfucker, we haven't had our team all year. Like, how are you judging us? Like, we have been fully capable of this whole year. It's like, dude, this has been the most annoying year of my career. It's not even close. It's not close. Because even, like, pros judge us. Like, we, like, there's only a couple pros that I've heard, like, be like, yeah, that's, that's shitty. Like, yeah. Like, imagine, imagine if any other team went through what we have had to gone through. Yeah. It would be, yeah, it's just, it sucked. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard year, but we got under back. We got champs. We just got to give it, you know, give it our all at the last one. I mean, that's it. We've been finally been getting like some good practice um, over these past like couple weeks. So, yeah, I'm just hoping for the best at champs. I, I think it's irrational for the amount of people that, I mean, even after you guys lose, like the amount of people that I saw tweeting, like people from the industry or people that are affiliated with the industry, the, the shit that they oh, tweeted. Oh, dude, everyone is. I immediately unfollowed like fucking five people. Yeah, and I'm like, I never want to hear from your stupidity. Everyone's again. such a critic and they don't even, they just, they look at the immediate result. They don't look at anything else. They just look at that. And it's like, 
what are you going to do? I mean, that's that's like that's part of just sports culture in general. So there's not really much you can do, but it, it definitely like does get annoying, just because like I know our team knows, but and everyone else thinks they know, and it's like it's just annoying. I mean, yeah. Uh, obviously, after difficult years like these, after the amount of years that you've sat competing day after day, the amount of critics, the amount of love, because you do, you are loved. You are a, one of the most loved esports personalities Yeah, ever. let me, let me also say that there are a lot of people that. More than the squeaky wheels. There are a lot of people that do, you know, show love and support. And we, we really do appreciate you guys because like, there's a lot of people that will cheer for us when we're winning and just shit on us when we're losing. It's so annoying. Mm -hmm. It's that, that's like, that's kind of like my most that's my most hated part of competing is that when you're winning it's amazing and everyone's so nice and so great to you and we love you and then like you start losing and you'll see that same person just start shitting on you. It's like it's but there are a lot of fans that you know win or lose they do have our back. The majority. And that's those are the, I really appreciate them because like you know the they they're just they they understand, you know. They they get it. We're human. People just expect the world from us all the time, and we can't always give you that. We're we're doing our best, you know. Like we're doing our best. So that's just that's all we can give. And the people that understand that, we got mad love for you. So thank you. So obviously, with with the amount of accomplishments, with the amount of love that you do get from from the fans, um, you know, the, the successes from from a financial standpoint, like that's taken care of. So what sparks a person like you who has accomplished as much as you have? who has literally carried uh, not not just a league, but, you know, the brand also that that, that you represent. Um, and I say carry uh, on the optic side, like very with 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 uh, with insider knowledge and 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 and, uh, and more of a different perspective as a team owner and, and, and what you have you've brought to this. Obviously, we all respect everybody that that puts in work here from, you know, Roger to Joey to Maddie to every, uh, all the players. Obviously, we all carry our, our, our own weight. Uh, but for you, after having done all that, like what what keeps that spark going? Like obviously you you've hinted towards retirement in the past, sometimes jokingly, sometimes I know that it's not jokingly. Sometimes you know we 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 go through these things almost on a yearly basis now. What what keeps that spark going? Is it is it competition purely? What what is it? Uh, I think it's it's a mixture of like competition purely. I've always loved competing. I, I grew up playing sports all the time. I've just always enjoyed competing. I've always enjoyed striving to be better, striving for improvement. I think like that's always that's always something that's really kept me going just because like you know, getting on for practice every day, the team camaraderie, you know, trying to get better, trying to all collectively work towards a goal. I think that that's always been something that I've really enjoyed just because like you know, through the through the highs and the lows, you know, your teammates, your coaches, everyone at Optic, you know, they all got your back. And I think that's one of the the really humbling experiences of competing. It's like you got three other people on your team beside you that are are relying on you. And I've I've always really loved that. Um, just I've I've always loved the team aspect of it. And I've grown to appreciate it more as I've gotten older. Again, back then I wasn't always the best teammate. Um, and that's something that obviously, if I if I could, I would go back and change it, but I can't. Um, but I think just like this, the the will to win and striving to be better would be like the things that make me keep going. And obviously, love for the game, and I think that's you know where things are starting to get a little rocky. Because the game itself, the game itself has just been. I mean. I played through the golden era of Call of Duty, and now we're getting these. Uh, you know, it's it's tough. Uh, post retirement, do you see yourself? I mean, I'm not saying that you're retiring. Whenever it is that that is, um, do you see yourself uh, becoming more of um, a Warzone streamer than a traditional Call of Duty streamer, multi game streamer? What what do you see in your future? Maybe see, a different game? Like yeah, formal? that's that's what's that's what's the interesting part. I'll, no, I'll never compete again. Like I'll I will never compete again whenever I'm done. I mean, not even in Warzone tournaments? I don't even think I want to play in those. I don't know. I'll probably I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm probably going to do like obviously I'm still going to want to watch Call of Duty. I mean, I'm probably going to be doing that stuff. Um, I don't know. We'll see. 
probably probably play a mix of everything. Well, looking forward to finding out what it is that you do in three years after you retire. Uh, I, I can't say never. I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe like something that comes out down the road and I'm like, I got to try. You know, I, yeah. who knows? But I'll, I, tell you, I'll tell you what, as a competitive person myself, not having half of the abilities that you have, the competitive drive will never, ever go That's away. what I'm saying. I can't say never. Anyway, this uh, this interview was brought to you by Oakley. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, like the video if you guys uh, want to continue to watch him compete. Dislike the video if you are a literal hater. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.